Is my screen visible to everyone? Yes, visible for me. Others, how about others? Yes. All right. Okay. So, uh, very good afternoon to everyone. So, thanks for joining our class. So, I have in this pack around 22 slides, all related to information security. And uh, we will discuss about information security and uh, basically, to some extent, the defense mechanism in this particular session. If you have any question, so what you can do is this, please note it down so that before, after we end the session, we have 40 minutes, the last uh, uh, 10 minutes, I'm uh, not 15 minutes. So the last 10 minutes, I'll be able to answer all your questions. So uh, this is basically the opening slide which talks about a lot of uh, jargons, I would say, in the area of cyber security. We are seeing backdoors, we are seeing leakage, we are seeing adverts, malwares, and all these things, worms, firewall. So these are uh, all related to information security. What exactly is information security? It's not very it's much audible. audible. Yes, okay. uh, Shintanda, your voice okay. is quite low. Okay, so is it clear now? Better, definitely, okay. yes. Okay, okay, perfect, perfect. So uh, in this particular slide, you are seeing a lot of jargons, which is all related to information security, cyber security, whatever it is. Basically, there are multiple areas of security. So the most common among them is the cyber security. So we'll come to all these details. And we have 32 slides, as I said. So all these slides are uh, containing information about the defense mechanism of from the risk we have. From the hackers or spoofers or whatever. So, this is about me. My name is Shijan Manager, I'm based on Kolkata. Having 35 years of IT experience in the area of information security, application security, operations management, compliance audit. Dada, it again gone little fade. Okay. So, uh, Okay, uh, I, I need to raise up my voice now. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so my area of specialization is in the area of information security, application security, operations management, service management, process, compliance, and audit, of course. I've worked for corporates like Kosha Bank, Stamp Charter, Bank, ITC, I was in the tobacco division, and the Linde Group, where uh, I was there for 10 years, doing uh, SAP security related activities globally. And I'm working in a company. So as a general manager for information security. So as I've just joined newly out here, so I just keeping the name of the company a bit company issue. So I'll, I'll, I'll put it maybe after one of this. And uh, I am an alumni and I have an alma mater for from uh, Falcony University, Amity University, Chennai, Jamshedpur, and here to Institute Munchen. So I'm here, of course. And, uh, I have various kinds of international certifications, which includes from Novell, Microsoft, ISO. I'm an ISO 27001 Security Lead Auditor. So Bureau of Editors, which is VVQI, Osaka, and uh, six, two, six, six, seven, nine, six Sigma Institution as well as OWAs. This is um, just about me. So in this session, this is basically the agenda of uh, the training is basically what exactly is cyber security, why security, why do we require security? What do we mean by the CIA and PPT? Normally whenever we say it's PPT, it is, we mean for, I mean, we mean the standard slides, that's the PowerPoint presentation, but no, actually with respect to the security, it is not. We are going to talk about the risks, threats, and vulnerabilities. We are going to talk about the motives of uh, cyber criminals, why they do it. We are going to talk about the various kinds of damages on various aspects. And we are going to talk about the precautions and how we can protect our systems from cyber criminals. And of course, there will be a um, question session. 
So this is the agenda of this particular session. Now, as uh, during the starting, Amit said that there are, you know, whenever we open our internet or news, TV news, newspaper, we keep on hearing that a lot of things have happened in terms of records being exposed, records being stolen, our confidential information is being hurt by somebody else, and uh, there are a lot of companies that they are being bankrupt due to cyber attacks. We have ransomware attacks on this for maybe particular companies and blah blah blah. So we keep on hearing all these things, and actually, whatever you see. Actually, it is happening in that way, whatever is published in the book. There are maybe 20% of the news or 30% of the news which is published, the rest is not published, but things are happening on every minute, every second, every time. And we have to protect ourselves. Remember one thing, 100% protection may be not possible, but if you are planning to do 50% of the protection, that is more than sufficient. And that is what actually we are going to uh, discuss in this particular session. So before starting off with the protecting part, basically what we need to understand is basically what exactly we mean by the term called the security. So it is basically a technique, it's a process to protect our equipment, which contains data. Remember one thing, we protect our data and nothing else. No hardware, no software, we don't protect them. We are actually protecting the data because that is the most valuable thing on earth. So data has to be protected. And whatever we are doing, whatever precautions we are taking, we are actually doing it only for the sake of the data. Because data is the intellectual property of an individual or of an organization. Remember one thing, this term called intellectual property. Say for example, what do we mean by intellectual property? Intellectual property is basically a property which is being created out of intellect. So Mona Lisa was being created by Da Vinci. So Da Vinci has the intellectual property of, of, on, on that particular um, photo or on that particular art or painting, whatever you define. According to the Science Institute, the top vectors for the vulnerability are vulnerability means the gaps through which basically the attack can happen. Say, for example, we, in our house, we all have a main door, which normally we, in the late evening or before night, uh, what we do is this we put lock and key. Why? Because if it is open, that is a vulnerability. And from that particular vulnerability, what happened? A thief may enter your house. So vulnerability is basically the possibility of the big hack. So what are the basic vulnerabilities? And SANS Institute says the four most important web, I mean, vulnerabilities are the web browser, the message tool, which we use for chat normally, the web applications, and excessive user rights. These are the four most important threats. Oh. So these are the four most important uh, vulnerabilities which we have to control. Now when we are talking about the security, basically we have terminologies or jargons which comes, one is basically the privacy concern, yeah, of course we need to I mean, keep privacy, that is the reason the security I mean, measure has to be in place. Identity theft, our details should not be stolen. We should be able to meet expectation of our clients. And for that reason, what happens security, our protecting the data is a must. So we have to ensure our business continuity. We have to keep in mind the compliance, the audit part. We have to keep in mind the copyright violations, copyright violations related to say, for example, there is an author who's written a book and uh, today it got published, tomorrow we see the free version PDF in the, in, the, in, the, in the net. So you can download it and you can do it. So this is basically the copyright violation. What exactly is happening? Next is the resource violation. Of course, reputation. One of the most important things, the laws, 
the statutory and the regulatory requirement minimizing the financial loss and do business safety. So all these things include the thing like why should we should go for security and why we should be secure. Now comes uh, one of my favorite slides where we are talking about the CIA and TV. So these are the two things uh, when we talk about the CIA, uh, we talk about the confidentiality, availability and integrity of the data. When I say confidentiality of the data, in any organization, there are data which is being classified as confidential, highly confidential, not confidential, but public. Say, for example, let's take uh, an organization. So, if they are considering public data, what is the public data? Their website, where everybody can log in and they can see. That piece of information is public. But when we are talking about the confidential information, it can be about the business policy. It's very confidential. Okay. It's confidential also. And what we mean by very confidential? Within the organization, very confidential, maybe uh, the plan for the next, uh, maybe two years down the line, business plan for the maybe two years down the line. Okay. With respect to other employees, confidentiality stands like HR related data is very confidential. No hospital patient related data is very confidential. So we, when we talk about confidentiality, we need that only that person who is responsible to see can only see the data. Otherwise, nobody can see that. That is the confidential. Next, we talk about the availability of the data. Say, for example, I am working in a marketing department. Definitely, marketing and sales related data, I should be able to visible. Otherwise, I'm not able to. So, availability of the data means the user should be able to see the data when it's required. But it doesn't mean that they should be able to change it. It depends upon it. The policy and integrity of the data. Integrity means basically the format in which I use and send the data to you, you will be able to see the data in the same format. Say, for example, I create an Excel sheet with some graphs, colors, and all these things. So, when I'm, I'm mailing this particular Excel sheet to you and you see the same colors, that means the integrity is being maintained. Otherwise, integrity is not maintained. So, CIA is the basic pillars of information security. They are the three most important. Need, they are the only pillars of security. We should keep the data confidential. It should only be available to that particular user who requires it. And the data should be having integrity. That means the format of the data should not be changed. And all these three things for whom you are doing, you are doing for PPT. That is for the people, the process, and for the technology. So People means the user of an organization. So you are actually maintaining the confidentiality for the people or for the employees of the organization. You are maintaining the CIA to maintain and be compliant with the defined process, which is a conformed process. And of course, you are doing using the correct and appropriate technology. That is the most important thing. So whenever we are talking about security, the three pillars of the security is the confidentiality, the availability, and the integrity of the data. And for whom you are doing, we are doing for the people, for the processes using the right technology. So this is what a CIA and PPT stands for. Now, the top most dangerous things which may attack us the denial of service attacks, which makes your system slow, and at a certain point of time, you will see that your system is dead. So you have to re reboot your system. That is what we call it as a DOS. And this, if DOS, this DOS is spread across your network, that is called a distributed DOS. Then in the middle of that, say for example, you are sending a mail to me or you are chatting with me, a man enters in between and tries to find out or figure out what I am conversing with you. So this is called a man in the middle. We have phishing and we have spear phishing. So we have password attacks. Phishing is basically actually um, I'm trying to figure out your uh, say maybe your password by knowing what is your date of birth, what is your mother's name, of birth, and all these kind of things. So confidential information which normally is asked by the bank. So that is what is. Phishing is and spear phishing is a forceful, brute attack kind of stuff. 
That's what is the password attack. Where you basically try to guess or hack the password and you attack it. We have SQL injection. Amit uh, will be going SQL injection much better than me. It is not the uh, you know uh, injection which we are taking for the COVID uh, COVID virus. It is basically a code using which you can see our database without logging in using the logon credentials. That is what our SQL injection is all. We have the eavesdropping attack where it means that basically you are trying to hear confidential information and trying to attack the uh, site of the person or trying to take the credit logon credentials of the particular person. Mal malware is basically a code which uh, uh, sits on your system and it basically takes away the data slowly. We have botnets, we have ransomware. Ransomware is a very dangerous thing where it will attack, it will destroy all your data, and then it will ask for money to uh, and decrypt the data. So in ransomware, basically what happens, the data gets encrypted. See, I'll be using a lot of words, and uh, these are the words like encryption, decryption, and all. Basically, you please note it down if you are not understanding. So then what happens in this, after the session is over, you can throw questions and uh, I'll, be, I'll be answering all these questions. So uh, yeah, that's where is where we, uh, the data is being decrypted and it is the most advanced, I would say, malware attacks. And uh, basically social engineering, social engineering happens between friends where uh, they talk a uh, lot of things and try to guess what you have know, is. So these are the top, most common, you know, threats right at the present moment using which your uh, log of credential is stolen and uh, or your system is being, I mean, the data in, inside your system is stolen or your system is being crashed. So these are the main few things. Apart from this, what remains? Nothing. Now, Whatever we have seen is basically we have seen the threat. Remember one thing, when we normally go to go for a security audit, the first thing what we do is this, we try to identify the threat and then we try to mitigate the threat. Okay. So basically when we are actually, I mean, compiling all the threat, we basically create a risk matrix in an Excel sheet. And against the risk matrix, we put the controls what should ideally be there so that the risk can be mitigated. And once this sheet is prepared, now we know how to audit and what to audit and at which site to audit and on which systems we should. Okay. So remember one thing. I mean, whatever we have talked earlier, it was all related to risk. And now we come to mitigation. Now, these are the mitigations, which is all in our hand, and we should follow religiously. In 95% of the cases, we don't follow. Let us take an example. I don't want an answer. Keep the answer with me. Do you have a licensed antivirus on your mobile? 90% of the answer will be no. I am 100% sure of it. I have tried in various sessions in India, abroad, and it has been seen that 90% of the people are not having antivirus on their mobiles and maybe 2-3% to is having antivirus on their mobiles but they are all the free versions which is, I mean, uh, which becomes uh, maybe disabled or not updated properly after a certain period of time because you have to buy them. So we don't know. So like this, there are a lot of things which we have to maintain otherwise our life is not Believe me. Now, before going to the remediation plans or before we go to the risk mitigation plan, let me share one thing with you. I have a friend of mine and uh, he is basically uh, in information security. Now, we normally use Google to search, call it as a search engine. Remember this theory. Let's say, for example, you are trying to search something like cyber security. You'll get a lot of things. But are you getting 100% hits? Not at all. 80%? No. 70%? No. You are just getting 30%. Just 30% hits you are getting. So where are the rest of the 70% gone? 
70 percent are in the dark web, which can only be visible not through normal means, but through abnormal means, which we don't use. So remember one thing, whatever is happening, bad, it is happening in the dark web. You can buy passwords, I am sorry, you can buy your virus, you can buy your arms, you can buy a lot of things in the dark web. Even you can go to the dark web and see my passwords as well. So that is the reason. The first and foremost thing a password is you must change your password within 15 days. If you are having, I'm talking about banking passwords mainly because finance is related to it. 15 days you should change your password because it takes good amount of time to get updated into the dark web. 15 days for bank transaction passwords. Keep this in mind. Now, we need to understand how the password will be. It should be minimum eight characters, or minimum. It should be a combination of your case and numbers and special characters. And the word is dictionary words. Dictionary words are those words which are found in the dictionary. And it is easier for the hackers to, you know, uh, try to find out what your password is. So use a non-dictionary word. It may be tough for you to uh, remember. Maybe uh, on the left-hand side of the screen, you can see something RSA. Okay. So you can put a uh, password like RSA and then it 6612, this kind of thing. RSA is not a dictionary word. So uh, these are the very, very odd things you should do for your password. Don't use <coughs> passwords like your uh, mother's name or wife's name or father's name or your name or your organization name followed by a certain sequential number because these are dangerous and it can easily be found. Keep the password safe. Don't share with anyone. That is the most important thing. We have a tendency of writing passwords on the postscript and pasting it on the table. Don't do this. This is a bit for you later. <coughs> Don't share any passwords with anyone. And keep in mind the two factor authentication. When we are talking about the two factor authentication, we mean that actually we have to move, give two things. One is the password, the other one is some other things or other factors which either I know or I have. For example, the RSA token generates a number. So after giving the password, it might also ask for the particular number. So these are the two factor authentication, or it can be multi factor authentication as well. So after giving the password, it might ask you for a fingerprint or biometric print or whatever it is. So these are the things we should keep in mind that two factor authentication is a must. Maybe for personal use, it is not possible because it has been enabled from the server end, but in organizations, yes, it is a mandatory. So this was all about the passwords. Now uh, let's come to a data map. To get rid of ransomware, you must back up your data library. Take the important data, keep it in the Google Drive. We have 15 GB free space in the Google Drive, and 15 GB is a huge amount. So what you do is just put the important data out there. And remember one thing. This normally happens in office. In office also the servers are being backed up. But we keep on taking backup in the server. But do you bother to test it? That is one of the most important things because without testing a backup, the backup is useless. So every 15 days, 20 days, or maybe a month, the backup has to be tested. And the data has to be checked. We call it as a sanity checking of the data. So it's a bad data. The backup drive or tape should be placed in a secure place. People should have restricted access for those backup devices. And when you are taking a backup, it should be encrypted. By default, if you are uploading your personal data in the Google Drive, don't upload passwords and all in the Google Drive because that might be the problem. Okay? But 
Apart from that, files, photos, and all these things, which is, is personal to you, you can upload it and to be with them. They are all in there. All in there. And we don't have one thing. This is for the organization. That is, when I'm taking a backup from one branch, we should try to keep the particular tape in another branch. And that is what we call it as an offset. So, by definition from the backup, it is basically you should take the backup on a regular basis and religiously. Number two is this, you should take, test the backup. These are the things that are not talking about the person, but we are talking about the organization. The backup should be tested. There should be proper restriction of handling the backup mediums. Backup should be encrypted. So when you are starting or firing the backup, it should be encrypted. And the backup has to be stored in an off-site location because if this location is having any kind of problem, very far, very flood, or whatever it is, you can take the off, off I mean the data, I mean the backup media, which is kept in the off-site, and you can restore it and you can start it. So first, we have seen passwords and how to put the traps in terms of the password. Second thing is we have seen the data backup. We should do it. So we are been, we have been using the Google the I mean Google uh, email IDs, but uh, I believe that there are very few people who uses the uh, <coughs> the drive which Google has given 15 GB of data can be stored. We don't use it, or maybe very seldom people use it, but we should try to use it. But again, I'm telling you, don't keep password in these kind of bank documents and all these kind of things out there in the Google Drive. So apart from this, whatever you want, you can keep it. Now, immediately you might ask the question, so where do I keep all these things? You take an external drive, copy it, and keep it. That's all. After a certain point of time, maybe 15 days, 20 days, just check whether that is functioning or not. That will be enough. Now, mail, which is very, very important. And uh, when we are talking about the mail, you know, we are talking about the mails from the organizational point of view because that is more confidential than your personal emails using Yahoo or Gmail. The first thing is this, that you should change your passwords often. That can be true for your personal uh, mails also. And please don't share passwords. But the password should be, uh, it should not be a, you know, easy to uh, remember kind of a thing. It should be tough for anyone to guess it. Next, one of the very important things, personal or official thing, is don't open any attachment until and unless the source of the attachment is from the person who you know. Be very careful. Don't even consider PDFs or Word or Excel or whatever it is. Don't open these kind of attachments. Uh, antivirus has to be used on your local machine also to uh, protect your local system from these kind of attachments because this kind of attachment might contain malicious code which might harm your system. So be very careful about it. Now, if you find any mails by seeing the, you know, like the subject of the mail that is may not be your mail or it might be something mischievous. Just delete it immediately. Don't open it. If you find any mails from a person who has sent you, you are not aware of that person. And it says something urgent and all. Just delete it. Just plain delete it. Okay. Remember one thing. Email addresses can be forged. So be very careful. Not only that, Whenever you are opening the bank sites and all this, again, you be careful. I'll come to that later. Let's talk about the mail first. Don't give your email address to sites which you are not aware of. You'll be seeing that there are a lot of sites will ask for your email address and all. So they say that they will be sending you mailers and all. Don't accept it. Don't accept it. Because once you're giving the email address, 50% of your security is exposed. Don't post your email address as I said in public websites or forums and don't use your official mail or your personal use. This is an important business ethics. It may not be a threat, but 
Nasıl business yapıyorsun? Doğru kurucular ofis yerinde oraya post yapıyorsun. Kaç yere bakıyor burada browser security? Browser is Internet Explorer. It can be Firefox. It can be Opera. It can be Internet Explorer, Safari, Word, blah, blah, blah. The first thing you should do is this. Don't allow your browser to store passwords. It's a very, very common practice across the globe. Don't allow your browser to store passwords. Once you have surfed the net, clear your cache. Clear your cache. Just clear your cache, clear your cookies, clear browser history, everything. If you can do it on a daily basis, nothing like it. If you can do it on a weekly basis, great. You have to do it. And monthly basis, if you don't get the time, at least do it for a month at least. Whether you are using a personal laptop or an office laptop, good address should be. When I say a good anti management, it's no definition of good. But it should be a standard anti -arrangement. Okay. In a lot of cases, we have the concept of autofill. So your name is wanted. When you say yes, automatically your date comes. Then your last name comes, then your email comes, then your phone number comes. Don't allow it. So you should avoid the autofill. Okay. And if you can avoid the autofill, nothing like it. You don't have one thing. The autofill is a dangerous thing because it is storing in your data in some way or the other somewhere. So be very careful. When you are ordering from uh, maybe Amazon or Mall, so don't ask them to save your credit card details for the next transaction. Every time you give the credit card number, the expiry date of the number, the CVP and your name, every time. Take the pain of doing it, but don't store it. You should use very complex passwords, especially when you are accessing the, when you are, you know, accessing with the outside world. And when you are specifically bank transaction, please do browse in the incognito mode. When we are talking about the incognito mode, it keeps everything secure. Very, very much secure. So, prefer the incognito browser, specifically when you are actually doing tron banking transactions. Let's say, for example, what I do is this. I give you a URL and say, please open it without taking any hesitation, we will open it. But before opening it, please for God's sake, check that is whether it is a secure HTTP or not. Or HTTPS, either it starts with HTTPS or it can be SHTTP also. Both are secure. But please, please do bother to check. It's very important. And you don't know one thing. If it asks for any certificate warnings, Please accept because certificates are always for security purposes and nothing else. These are the public key or the private key. Or, or the, these are the public keys. So accept the same certificate for secure transactions. Okay. Now, when a certificate warning is, you're getting a certificate warning, if you don't understand, you can talk to the IT department and they will help you. But ideally, it has to be accepted. Now we are talking about the mobile security. This is the security which today you are hearing, and you should actually you know, distribute this entire learning to your family members also who is using mobiles. I remember seven eight months back, I was delivering a security related lecture. In a hospital at Avatar. And uh, before my session, uh, somebody called me up from the IT department and said, yes, Sir, can you do a favor? Can you keep a single slide for what should the kids do while, when they are actually surfing the net? 
what precautions should the guardians take when their kids are surfing the net? So I have prepared those slides, and uh, believe me, I've got a huge amount of experience. And what from the kids and what they should do from the parents and what they, they should do. So there are several ways of you know, I mean, protecting your system. Very basic things you maintain, and seventy to eighty percent things are done. The first thing is this: your device should not be open; it should be locked, either with a password or a pin or a pattern. I would again, I'm saying, I would request all of you to share this particular slide with your family members who are using the mobile phones or handheld devices. The next is only use or deploy apps which is trusted in the market. Don't deploy apps which you are also not aware of. So, for example, I am actually, uh, you know, deploying an app which is related to Standard Chartered Bank or maybe a SBI bank or whatever it is. These are the known apps. But if we are deploying an app which is related to maybe gambling or something, if where the source is not trustworthy, please avoid. Number three, the operating systems of your device, the patch management, that is what is called technical, it should always be updated because that contains actually the patches to defend your system from being hacked. So operating system related updates, always accept that and do it immediately without any delay. Don't click on any attachment from unsolicited emails. We have also or already described this, have been discussed about it. Always try to avoid transmitting or storing personal information on the device. This is also we have discussed. Data has to be encrypted on the phone. Ideally, either you enforce encryption on the phone or you use system emails and all this, which is already encrypted. I know Gmail, Yahoo, well, they are not encrypted. But data should be encrypted. Even your WhatsApp is also encrypted. That is what they say. Of course, back up your data with the important uh, uh, data which is stored in your mobile and then you upload it in the Google Drive. At least keep an antivirus. And even if it is free of cost available, please do install it. Please. At least 30% of the you know malwares, I mean malwares or adwares or whatever it is, get filtered with a free antivirus software also. When you are finished, net banking related operation, please sign out and close the app. Keep security software updated. This may be applicable for uh, the adults, uh, the laptops, basically. One of the very important things is, is delete all the apps which you do not no longer uh, use it. I'll give you an example. Say, for example, today I have. Uh, Deployed the app which is related to Olympics. It always gives me 36 language country has got big kind of medals and what. Now, it gives you all these things. Maybe after the Olympics is over, 15 days, 20 days, I'll keep it and I'll delete it because I don't prepare it anymore. So, if you are not using any apps, just delete it. Don't allow it to occupy space and invite extra hassles which you are not aware of or things are not under your control. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, when you are not using it, disable it. Number two is, in any stations, say for example, every uh, metropolitan city, they have a railway station, a main railway station. We have it in Calcutta, it's in Bangalore also, in Chennai also we have uh, Chennai Central, and how and Kolkata, and how are, in uh, Mumbai, you have CST, that is separate from the terminus. Initially, it was known as, uh, it was a different name altogether. So, uh, don't use this free Wi Fi available from the stations and from the platforms. Don't use it. Because, you know, you know like, uh, uh, I mean, right at the present, the government has started this kind of free service. And 
uh, then this happened in Kolkata basically. So after starting after the four five months, they have stopped the service uh, for fifteen days, and they wanted to check the data. What kind of data is people are accessing using the internet? And uh, this was an exercise by the, the police department. And uh, fortunately, I was also part of it. The other was in the police, so I was also part of it as a reporter. It was a case. And uh, after doing something very well, easy, I'll not be able to share with you. We understood that it's very, very, you know, um, dangerous to move this kind of media to get connected to the internet. So be very careful about it. Every time, every second, we can see multiple, you know, hits happening from various malicious uh, sites, which is we are not aware of. It was happening from US, Australia, China, Pakistan, every now and then. I mean, you can see various kinds of you know uh, traffic, which is dangerous. Now, the most important is the theoretical defense, and this is the defense you have to do it before disclosing sensitive information to others. First thing is this that you should educate yourself, you should educate your family members as well. Not to share any important things with others, specifically maybe your, uh, your maybe account number, maybe your data uh, book, maybe your mother's maiden name, and these kind of things. Be very careful. So you educate yourself and you also your education to your family. This is what I'm talking about education. It is talking about the awareness. Be aware of the information you are releasing. So whenever you are sending a mail, when you are sending any information, be 100% sure that you will not be affected. Thank you. Number three is determine which of your assets are most valuable to your clients. The data. Normally what happens in an organization is that after using a laptop for maybe five or six years, what they do is this. They call up the, uh, maybe a vendor, maybe their library or whoever, and say that, boss, we are releasing 120 laptops. I want 120 new laptops. Let us go for a buyback scheme. They are very happy. They will take the old laptop. But before disposing of the laptop, do we bother to clean the hard drive which contains data? Formatting of the hard drive doesn't do, you can unformat it and you can get that data. So what you need to do, basically what you need to do is basically you need to remove the partitions so that the data is lost. Do you bother to do it? It should be. The software patches, it should be up to date, whether it's operating system related, whether it's not operating system related, patches should always be up to date. And if somebody is asking for certain information, be very careful. So for example, you receive a call log. I'm calling from such and such bank. Uh, Madam, there has been a crisis in your account number. So uh, can you do me a favor to uh, address this particular account number? Uh, I request your login ID and password so that what you can do is you can check and you can resolve your problem. Be very careful. The way they speak, especially to the older generation, not to our generation, but to the older generation. Will be be confused, and unfortunately, if they have it, they will release it, and finally, the entire stuff is gone out of the account. Don't, don't accept anything which is free. Let's keep calling you. You have a free credit card, sir. With which address should I send you? Yes. The free credit card is available for me. You keep it on your job. That is what I say. Sir, calling from HDFC uh, Bank, we are offering you a free credit card. So, which address should I send it to you? So, I said, boss, you have a free credit card of mine. You enjoy it. Don't have to do it. Stick. This is what I call the stick to your guns. Okay. And never again, I'm telling you, never ever disclose any sensitive information. I have to anyone. And that will never ever ask these kind of confidential information 
because bank don't require it. Bank will not use the login credentials to log into the account and fetch data or I mean, uh, transfer money. Bank will never, bank will not bother to. Bank is not interested in seeing your uh, bank balance. Bank is not interested to see even your how many transactions you have done last week, how many transactions you are, you are doing this week. They are not interested. Boss. They are not interested. Okay, I have this is an experience I'm sharing from the banking from, from, from the banking side. I have worked with a bank called Star Chatter Bank. And uh, believe me, uh, bank never bank doesn't require this information at all from you. So be very careful. Ransomware is a malware. Malware is a uh, Basically, uh, software code which can basically can be shoot. And uh, one of such type is a ransomware which will basically encrypt your data and they will ask for money to decrypt it. The only way you can get rid of this particular thing is back up your data. That is a simple solution. Back up your data. At the end of the day, whatever you have done, just back up the data. Full backup. This is the first and foremost thing. Second is patch. Patch your operating system, patch your software for various software which you use deployed on your system. Then should not use any exe, which is uh, sent to you by mail. And you should use only reputed <coughs> or, sta or standard software security suit antivirus software. Oh, no. And of course, education is a must. In big corporates, every day now and then, they keep on telling you, do this, do this, do this, and don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. These are the slides, which is, these are the things which are related to Facebook. We are very fond of Facebook. So be very careful about, because these are the things which I have already discussed. A lot of Facebook when you are not using, don't accept friends request when you are not aware of. Okay, especially for the games and apps, be very careful. Watch out for the malicious software. All these things I have told you. That is also true for the laptop and desktop. The first and foremost thing is this, that use a licensed version of the operating system, use a standard. Antivirus software, these are the two most important things. These are the two most important things. And keep updating the patches as of when it comes. And rest are your supported stuff. But basic thing is three things. Standard of you should use a licensed version of the operating system, should be patched properly, and we use the standard antivirus software, which contains antivirus, anti spy, uh, anti spywares, anti malware and the adverts or every everything in the country which includes the federal facility as well so keep this in mind the best security cyber security best practice for people process of technology the first thing is this normally this happens in a corporate as i said that we always go for a risk-based approach wherever there is risk we try to find the mitigation plan and then we plan it accordingly backing backing up the data Multi-factor authentication, passwords should be securely kept and password should be, I mean, every, every 15 days change your password and you should use non dictionary words. There should be a standard tool, which we call it a CM tool and it should be monitored in the system for 24 into 7 basis. And uh, you should reduce the insider threats inside in an organization, 70% of the a uh, problem occurs with the inside people. So be very careful about that. And of course, again, you should go for audit and certification. This may not be possible audit and certification for everyone, but yes, I do it should be. I have given you some audit related jobs, which is available. This is a comprehensive list of uh, security, uh, I'm sorry, not audit, security related jobs, which is available in the market. 
okay and to get this jobs basically what happens these are the uh, areas of specialization you have to do which talks about the application security data loss prevention these are the techniques actually you need to do to prevent applications uh, to prevent application security to prevent data loss to enforce uh, forensics to uh, handle incident to take care of the network security to take care of uh, the network security architecture then you have to also consider the threat intelligence. These are the these are basically the technology that you basically the uh, I would say the things which you should keep in mind. Okay, when you are actually studying cyber security. If you are thinking of actually getting a job in cyber security with these uh, designations, then what happens is actually these are the areas which you should study. And I have given you three URLs which talks about uh, jobs available in the area of cyber security. And one thing you see, you will find out there's a huge opportunity of uh, you know jobs in the market for cyber security. Like this. this is one of the areas which is never going to get demolished because you remember one thing: till that day when data is there, the security job will be there for everyone. So, please put this knowledge, it's whatever we have discussed, it's a very, very small thing, not even for 0 0.0001% of cyber security. But please do keep in mind, take this knowledge and put it into questions, please. So, who will be the first to ask question? What comes to your mind? I remember in one of the sessions, you know, uh, somebody, I mean, not in this session, uh, previously, uh, somebody requested me to open this slide about me. So I opened this slide and uh, this guy asked me that, uh, sir, what is this? So somebody asked me, so what is this? So, and uh, he wanted to know more about this. No technical questions, but this is what they wanted to know. This is basically a global institute for Germany. They have the institute mentioned. So questions, please. So first question is always be a, uh challenge so let me ask uh, or start the questioning uh, session so i mean we have talked or we have learned the kind of very basic ideas what all things we should keep in mind and uh, etc now you said that uh, we should always install the apps which are from the trustworthy sources now how do we understand whether this is a this app is from a trustworthy, I mean, other than the common uh, government uh, agencies or something by Microsoft, HP, or any of those uh, renowned vendors, other than those vendors, how do I know that whether this is a trustworthy source or not? Not. First of all, we need to understand that why we are actually implementing installing an app. There are two, there are two things. One is there is one is for the need and one is for the want. When we talk about the need, we talk about the banking apps, we talk about uh, other apps as well, so maybe our email apps. And maybe. When we talk about the want, it's not a need, it's a want. Then we start installing all trash uh, kind of apps, right. which we will be requiring maybe for 15 years, 20 days. So this is how you can define it. So if it is out of your want, not a need, so let me explain it to you once more what is the basic between the uh, difference between a need and a want. The bread is your need, and the butter and the jam is your want. Okay? Right. So uh, basically what happens is you know, like uh, the apps which we do it out of our need. You don't have to bother. 
But if you are installing any app which is from a non standard organization, say for example, how to make, um, say, uh, let me take example of a publisher, uh, it is uh, Harper Collins. Harper Collins is an international publisher. So I read a lot of books. So it may be a requirement, not a requirement, so it's a want that I should in install their app in my mobile so that what happens, whatever new books are released, I get an intuition. So when I go and see, okay, this is a good company, I don't have to go there. But there are a lot of apps which is from a company which we are not aware of. So in those cases, you have to be very careful. Now, to support this, if you have a good uh, app that is installed, and if that app is having any malicious code inside it, immediately, that uh, antivirus will block it and will never allow you to use it. Right. So basically, you know, okay, all these things are related. It's a chain system. It is very much related. If, say, for example, you have uh, for your laptop, let's say, for your laptop, you have a enable your file. Okay. Now, we have seen in a lot of cases that while installing a particular software, you have to disable the firewall. Mm -hmm. So after installing it, we forget to enable it once again. Right. That is the biggest part of it. So once we keep the you know our door opens, the thief will enter at any given point. We have a small garden. In that garden, there is a door. We have to keep it open. There is every possibility that goats and cows are going to come inside and eat the plants. So keep the door open. I keep the door closed. And I have the every right to keep my door closed. I have the complete control in my hand to keep the door closed. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. There is a question in the chat window which I could not really understand. So, Priyadarshini, uh, will you please unmute and uh, spell out? Because you said that what is your opinion in taking cyber security engineering course? Okay. Yeah. See, okay. Uh, so, uh, what are talking about the cyber security engineering? It covers the entire gamut of all things related to cyber security. Remember one thing. When we are talking about cyber security, we are just using maybe 10% of the entire security. That is a frequently used term. That is the reason we say it's a cyber security. We have IT security, we have application security, we have we have network security, and all these kinds of things are put in this engineering course. Number one. Number two is there is also an aspect of ethical hacking. Okay. So ethical hacking doesn't mean that uh, you uh, log into some uh, server and you destroy it. So, hackers are of two types. One is gray hat, one is a black hat. You be a gray hat or white hat hacker. Don't have to, you know, uh, log into a system and uh, maybe crack the system. Ethical hacking is also part of here. Ethical hacking is uh, a certification by its own. It's called a ECH, but, uh, a CEH, certified ethical hacker. That is a different certification altogether. Do this part in the engineering course. Not only that, uh, apart from that, uh, to some extent, the audit related stuff, standards, various kinds of standards, ISO 27001, HIPAA, then uh, you have uh, PCI DSS, then you have, um, uh, I don't want to go to all this, but these are the standards. COVID is there, not COVID. I'm talking about C O B I T. Okay, COVID is also a standard. This is from the ISAPA. Okay. Uh, so these are the standards to some extent it's been taught. Okay, so it's a great course, I would say. It's a great course. But unfortunately, madam, to answer your question and to answer the entire crowd during interviews, it is really, really sad to see, you know, like when we ask questions to these candidates, very, very basic questions about security, but they may not be related to security. Let's say, uh, as well, uh, you have done cyber security, etc., etc. Uh, can you tell me what is the DNS? Can you tell me what are the different various classes of TCP IP addressing? What is the basic difference between IP V6 and IP V1? So these are the basic questions. It is not related to security as well. A person who is uh, 
in the interview of a database uh, administrator, this question can also be asked to him. And these are the very common things. Unfortunately, they fail to answer. Last to last uh, week, uh, we have taken three people in our organization in, in the, as, a, as a fresher, as a fresher. We take three to two. Do you know how many interviews I have to conduct? I have to conduct 53. So just imagine the level of time we have to spend on this. So as far as the study is concerned, whatever you are studying in any of this period, Study, try to study in between two lines. That is the most important. In between the two lines, there are a lot of things which is there. Right? Absolutely. Right. Right. Uh, maybe in the interest of time, very quickly, if anyone have any last question. We already have overshot the time. Any last question, very quickly. Okay, so if not, then thank you very much once again, uh, Shinchanda, my thanks trainer, so my so faculty. Thanks, so much, thanks a lot here. for inviting me as well. And thanks to all the participants as well from my side. Absolutely. All the very thanks for you, all the very thanks for your future in terms of security. And whatever you have learned today, try to implement that. And uh, go ahead with the details of it. Absolutely. And also we have created a WhatsApp group with all the participants. So if you have any question, please do post it there. So we will get it answered from uh, Mr. Banerjee. Okay. Thank you, all the participants. Thanks for your time as well. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Shin. you very much. Thank Bye. You. Bye. 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 Thank you.